Now at the National Women's History Museum, we have Halloween on our minds as I'm sure you do too. And at this time of year, we often see young people dressed up as fairies or Disney characters and princesses. However, we have an author here with us today who is ready to show us that there's so much more that young girls can be in life. Delanda Coleman joins us today to read More Than a Princess. As usual, she'll be answering your questions after the story. So if you, your classmates, or your grownups would like to ask a question, please use the Q&A function on the toolbar at the bottom of the screen. You can also interact with Delanda using the chat feature. You may ask your question at any time during the presentation and we will get to as many questions as time allows. And now I'm very pleased to introduce our author this afternoon. Delanda Colvin has spent over 15 years as a leader in product marketing for some of the world's largest and innovative software companies, including Microsoft and Vimeo. Inspired by the birth of her daughter, she and her husband Terrence began writing books to expose children of color to science, technology, engineering, art, and math, also known as STEAM. Together, they created Sydney and Coleman LLC, a media and publishing company to create educational tools that enable grownups to embrace and teach STEM concepts to the special children in their lives with confidence. A native and resident of Boston, Massachusetts, Delanda holds a master's degree in business administration from New York University and a bachelor's degree from Northeastern University. She's an avid reader and world traveler. Her most recent book, What's My Superpower? Discovering Your Unique Talents, co-authored with, co with her husband, Terrence, was released in July. The story follows Deshaun Prime, the only member in a family of superheroes who has yet to discover his unique superpower for helping humanity. You can follow Delanda and learn more about this book and her other publications on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Ms. Delanda, or learn more about her at sydneyandcoleman.com. Brave girls and boys, please join me in welcoming Delanda Coleman to our story time. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Lori, for that introduction. And I'm so excited today to join all the beautiful and handsome uh, princesses and princes. Um, as Lori mentioned, my name is Delanda Coleman, and I'm so excited today to read to you my first book, um, More Than a Princess. Uh, More Than a Princess was inspired by our daughter, Sydney, who's now eight. When, we were, when she was growing up, and she still enjoys this activity, she loves a bedtime story. But we were looking for bedtime stories that really focus on or empowering her and, and having her think about all the things that she can do as a princess. So today I'll get started in reading and what I'd like to do is if there is um, a young girl or boy in the audience that would like to share um, what type of prince or princess you would like to be when you grow up, um, I'd love to hear it. So if anyone wants to drop in the Q&A or the chat what they'd like to be, I'd love to read that and share it with the, the rest of the audience. So think about that while we're uh, reading, uh, reading the book, and we'll we'll circle back and um, and and we'll and we'll we'll ask that question to the audience during the Q and A. All right, all right. Let's get started. So the book is titled "More Than a Princess." Princess Kiana was laying in bed. Life in a castle is boring, she said. I've got many things, but I need something more. There's so much out there I have yet to explore. I wish I could find something more I could do. Then suddenly someone appeared out of the blue, her fairy godmother. Oh, what a sight. She fluttered her wings in an elegant flight. My darling Kiana, I've come from afar to help you realize just how special you are. You wouldn't believe all the things you can do. Nothing can stop a smart princess like you. Well, said the princess with a smile on her face, I wonder sometime what it's like up in space. An astronaut? How exciting, the fairy replied. Follow my lead and I'll be your guide. You'll learn about science, you'll study and read, with practice, you'll get all the skills that you'll need. Aboard a space shuttle, you'll zoom through the sky and watch the stars twinkle as you're whizzing by. 
On a space station, there's no time to rest. You'll work with your crew and carry out tests. Everyone there will be ever so bright. They'll pilot, fix stuff, even launch satellites. You might even be the first princess on Mars. With passion and work, you can reach for the stars. You wouldn't believe all the things you can do. Nothing can stop a smart princess like you. Kiana was thrilled. This trip was so much fun. What else would you like to explore, little one? Being a doctor, said Kiana out loud. Healing my patients will make me feel proud. Great, said the fairy, now follow my lead. Let's see what it's like to help people in need. The two were now back on their feet with their feet on the ground in a room full of doctors all running around. The fairy godmother said, look at them go. A day for a doctor is never too slow. You'll visit your patients and ask how they feel. You'll do all you can to help all of them heal. You'll diagnose and treat you'll comfort and care, you'll, take your, you'll talk to your patients to make them aware. You might wear a stethoscope to listen to their hearts or help fix, broken, fix bones that are broken apart. You wouldn't believe all the things you can do. Nothing can stop a smart princess like you. Kiana was excited. Can we try some more? Of course, said the fairy, what shall we explore? I'd like to see how engineering is done. Planning and building sounds ever so fun. Good choice, said the fairy. Come on now, let's go. I'll show you the things you need to know. Engineers can design and devise many things from robots to bridges to strong airplane rings. You'll choose in which area you'll specialize. You can build new machines that will change people's lives. You can help make new highways, long tunnels or roads, or design cool computers to decipher codes. You could help our great planet become very green by making clean energy through new machines. You wouldn't believe all the things you can do. Nothing can stop a smart princess like you. This is so great, said the princess with a cry. So said the fairy, what else should we try? Being an artist sounds exciting to me. I'd love to showcase my art for people to see. Oh, said the fairy godmother, let's start. Let's see what it's like to make beautiful art. There's so many things that our artist designs, a product, an advert, an advert, a card, or a sign. You might work with colors in each shade or hue, your artwork will show your unique point of view. Your creativity will express what you feel in your heart. Everyone will get lost in your beautiful art. They'll come from afar to admire what you've made. Your canvas and prints will be proudly displayed. You wouldn't believe all the things you can do. Nothing can stop a smart princess like you. But now we must go before your parents awake. Here's some advice I'd like you to take. Work very hard throughout your years and don't get discouraged or stopped by your fears. Do all your work with great dedication. Though things might get tough, have no hesitation. You wouldn't believe all the things you can do. Nothing can stop a smart princess like you. Now, there now was a princess with a vision in hand who knew she'd achieve whatever she planned. She'd grow up to be a princess like no other, thanks to the help of her fairy godmother. The end. And that's the end of the book. Uh, brave boys and girls, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. What a wonderful story, Delanda. And we have some amazing answers to your question. What kind of princess would you like to be? Let's see if uh -huh. I can slow down my chat here. Yes, we have some, some classrooms here with us. So um, 
And we have uh, some teachers answering saying uh, that Neha would like to be an Aurora, Eric would like to be a serpentologist, a snake scientist. Oh, nice. And then Anika would like to be Rapunzel, Rachel would like to be Elsa. But then, um, let's see, Danielle said she'd like to be a paleontologist because she likes dinosaurs. Nice. Doris said maybe Elsa or Ariel. And let's see. I see lots that. of lots of chatting. Oh, uh, Atharva would like to be an astronaut. Nice. Nervy wants to be a doctor. Benjamin would like to be a YouTuber. Nice. Cool. Those are all super fantastic princesses and princes. Uh, I can't wait to see them. Oh, Bobby well, would like uh, to be a sea princess. Yes, I like the ocean too. And then we have uh, some more who answer. There's a unicorn princess from Linda. Um, and Miss Sarah says that one of her students wants to be a singer and another wants to be an astronomer. So nice. lots of thoughts about, about this question that you posed to them. Awesome. I see one wants to be a ghost and another one wants to be a fashion designer, both very reputable princesses. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, wow. And I think one of the coolest things about you answering this question or, or asking this question is that one of the questions I received via email prior to the program from a teacher was that when first students asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? Me? Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, I've, I've always wanted to do lots of things. Um, when I was growing up, I wanted to be an FBI agent. I wanted to be, um, I did want to be an astronaut. Um, but when I got to college, I really liked marketing. And so I went to business school to become a marketer because I love storytelling and I love creativity and imagination. So I love being able to tell stories that convince people to to um to uh, uh follow my lead <laughs> wonderful wonderful and they keep coming in animal scientist a coder a writer you've really got the, the the juices flowing here um can you tell us if you would about your creative process especially co-writing with your husband what is that like yeah, so um, I always have these ideas floating around in my head. And like I mentioned, I wanted to be, I wanted to go into space. I really liked watching sci-fi movies when I was growing up. And so going into space was one of them. And then another thing was becoming a writer. So one of the things that I did is when I thought about the concept of more than a princess, I wrote down all the careers secretly that I wanted to be. So, I love so, it. Yeah. So the doctor was kind of like, I wanted to be a forensic scientist as part of the FBI. I wanted to always go to space so that I became an astronaut. So I wrote down all the, the things that I thought um, Kiana would could possibly be. And, um, and we sketched out and wrote down all the things that those um, careers did. And the other half of the career, the creative process is that my husband is really good at rhyming. He can really um, take words and he's very eloquent with them. And so, you know, I sketched out what the character did and my husband translated that into rhyme and so a lot of <laughs> a lot of the things that you hear are, are based on my husband's uh, uh elegant words so um so our process is kind of like we go back and forth you know i structure the story and he writes it and then i go in and make mod uh, modifications very interesting it sounds like a great team <laughs> yeah Benjamin would like to do would like to know what do the princesses' parents do in the story? Well, they're not in the story. I imagine they're just kings and queens, and they <laughs> and they um, are rulers of their particular area. Um, but um, my mom, I could talk about my mom. Um, my mom is was a florist, and so she likes to be very creative. She loves crafts, so she can. Um, so that's probably where I got some of my creative genes from and inspiration. So I imagine that the queen is probably very creative as well, and they're very supportive of their uh their daughter's ambitions to do more than just be a princess mm -hmm. well along those lines um amandine has asked uh 
you know, you've mentioned that you wanted to possibly be an FBI agent and, and some other STEAM careers, as we call it, uh, growing up. But did you were you ever discouraged um, from pursuing your dreams? And how do you think we can help um, our daughters make sure that they don't lower their standards of for their dreams? Yeah, you know, honestly, like I, I just was never shown the path of how to become an FBI agent. I think if someone had maybe intervened when I was younger and showed me how to become one, that I probably would have pursued it. So that would be the advice that I have. If you're curious about something, investigate it and ask your parents to kind of show you and expose you to a lot of those things. And if you're if you're a parent listening, that's one thing that I would say is just a lot of the um inspiration comes from early intervention uh, and exposure. And so exposing, uh, if you're a parent or a caregiver, exposing kids to as many things as they can early is really helpful for them to nurturing their curiosity and then hopefully inspire, giving them some inspiration. I'm sorry, I'm just distracted by all these wonderful answers that are still coming in. Uh, there, there's, um, Someone saying they want to be an animator, and I think you've gotten you've really inspired some people because they've said they they want to be a computer engineer, an engineer, a police officer. So That's some awesome. really, really great <laughs> answers still coming in. Um, but one question I had for you was how has motherhood both inspired your creative voice and given you a call to action? Yeah, well, to be honest, I've always wanted to write and I just never knew what I wanted to write about. And it wasn't until the birth of my daughter that I really recognized the need to one, have characters that are diverse in books and, and also have characters that talk about comp subjects that are a little bit more complex than just being a beautiful princess. So some of the earlier books that I read, not all, but a lot of them were just kind of focusing on qualities of a princess that were more superficial, should I say? <laughs> <laughs> and I was really looking for books that were that went deeper and that talked about science and talked mm -hmm. about technology and talked and gave that exposure that I talked about. And so um, there aren't a lot of books out there that do that. Um, and my daughter at the time was obsessed with princesses. And so instead of, you know, throwing away the idea of becoming a princess, I embraced it and that you can be a princess doctor, you can be a princess engineer, you can be both at the same time. And so that's, um, that was, she was my inspiration. I wanted her to know that she can be more than a princess. She can be anything that she thinks of and dreams of. And, um... We have another student who's asking about the, the setting and the location of the story. Did you imagine that even though it's not specified in the book? Yeah, I imagine that she's, you know, living in a, a city like mine. I live in Boston, Massachusetts, which is like a major urban city. And I imagine that um, that she's lucky enough to have a window that she can peer out into the stars. And I think that's the big thing that so she can see uh, the stars twinkling, she can see shooting, um, shooting stars, and she can see uh, planes taking off, and that, that was her inspiration. So um, that's, you know, that's what I imagine. <laughs> I remember I had a, I had a, um, uh, a, a window in my bedroom, like most of us. <laughs> and one of the things that I love to do is to, to lay in bed and look out and reach into the stars. So that was like a big, um, uh, thing that when I was working with the illustrators that we had to have a big window in the room and in the window we have to have a telescope so she can look in the stars. <laughs> well, on, on that note, um, our audience loves to hear about how books are, are illustrated and this book is just beautifully illustrated. It's very colorful. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, how this book's illustrations came to be? Yeah, so I started off after we wrote written the manuscript. So that's the first phase is that after you've, um, when you write something, it's called the manuscript. And I had the manuscript. And what I did is that I started looking at other books. I started going to the bookstore and sitting in the bookstore and looking at the covers that really stood out. And um, looking at things that characteristics of books that I just liked and I started jotting down notes about what I liked about the books and one of the things that I really liked is that 
that I liked books that had the character front and center and had and and was able to showcase all her interests. So if you notice, like she has um, a blackboard in the back, she has a poster, she has her dress, she also has a telescope. So you could get a, you can learn a little bit about her even before uh, you started. And I wrote all those things down. I said that I wanted a princess with two Afro puffs <laughs> and I wanted her to um, be curious and I wanted her uh, imagination to be to be wild. And I also wanted her to, to her favorite colors were pink. <laughs> so, hence, um, cause that's my daughter's favorite color. So hence her pink rug. My daughter has a pink rug in her room and, you know, different shades on the wall. And so mm -hmm. our, the, the good thing is like the best thing that you could do if you want to work with a talented artist is that you show them examples of things that you like, and then you also write down the, the vision that you have for them. And so that was that was a lot of the process. And so she sketched out a page. Actually, this was the first page that she sketched out for me. I asked her to sketch out this scene. And she sketched out this scene for me. And so based on that, I knew that she was the right artist because she drew such a beautiful picture. And I fell in love with this picture. And then um, we just moved on and went from there. Well, wonderful. And and I, I think the, the sort of is a self-serving question because I think uh, your work speaks for itself, but how important is it uh, in your opinion that um, young girls of color and, and, and children of color see themselves in these books that have predominantly been, um, you know, dominated by white characters or, or white protagonists. Well, I think it's important for the children, for black girls to see that there are black princesses out there so that they can see themselves reflected in the story. And for non black children, I think it's important just so that they can develop empathy and develop sort of a skill set around so that they can see others, other things in the world and that the world is this diverse and interesting place. And so um, that was that was what was really important to me in that what's even more important is that the message in the book is universal it has <laughs> so although the character may be black the message is for all girls that they can they they, they can be princesses and they can um, be smart and nothing is going to stop them in the world if they have a, a vision and and they're, they're dedicated right more more answers to your question vienna would like to be a forensic anthropologist Nice. Some thought in that one. Catherine <laughs> would like to be an interior designer. Awesome. Um, and here's an interesting question from an audience member. Uh, where can your book be purchased? And is it available in other languages, French, Spanish, German? It is. Um, so where can you get it? You can get it at my website at sydneyandcoleman.com or amazon.com or Bonja Noble or Target or Walmart. You can get it. In, and so any online bookstore, you can get it or you can get it at my website. Um, and the, the second question, is it translated in different languages? Not yet. It is on our uh port it's, it's on our project list to do we want to first start with spanish because um i get a lot of requests from other spanish-speaking folks and so it that's my goal is to launch the book in spanish great all right it looks like our questions are starting to to um wind up a little bit if you have any um and to our audience uh, members, scroll back through the chat. I, I've put the uh, the title of the book in the chat, More Than a Princess by Delanda Coleman. I think I've gotten to all the questions in the Q&A, but if you have a last minute question, by all means, put it into the Q&A function. And then one final question uh, before we sign off, what call to action or takeaway would you like young people watching today to hear? Yeah, so one thing that I would like you to hear, and I'll, and I'll read this page again in the book. It is my favorite line in the book. And um, this is right when Kiana, fairy godmother, is um, requesting her to go back to bed. But before she leaves, she says, work very hard throughout all your years. Don't get discouraged or stopped by your fears. Do all your work with great dedication. Though things might get tough, have no hesitation. 
You wouldn't believe all the things you can do. Nothing can stop a smart princess like you. And that's my message. I, I really encourage all you beautiful and brave um, children to really think about explore as many things as that you want to and don't get discouraged or stopped by fears just try something once in life if you want to explore something always do it and though it might get your decisions or choices they might get hard and but don't get discouraged by that just continue on and so that's my message to all of you and i hope that um i hope that's inspiring and i hope you enjoyed that very much so. Um, just a, a great story. And I'll, I'll put in a little plug. Uh, you can, again, I put uh, the website, Delinda's website, excuse me, website, sydneyandcoleman.com into the, uh, the chat. So you can pur purchase the book there. And you can also go to one of our favorite independent woman-owned uh, bookshops, eastcitybookshop.com and order it online. Um, thank you again, Delanda, for sharing this inspiring story with us. Uh, just a reminder that this presentation today is being recorded. So if you want to go back, hear the story again, hear the conversation with Delanda, it'll be available on our website for viewing later this week. And as always, if you enjoyed today's Brave Girls program, please join us on Wednesday, November 10th, when we'll be joined by author Karen Greenwald as she reads A Vote for Susanna, the First Woman Mayor in Observance of Election Day. Until then, keep reading, be brave, follow your dreams. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Lori, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Delanda. Wonderful compliments coming in in the chat. I hope you see them. Yes, thank you, everybody.